भीमा तीर निवासाय मंडलीपुरवासी पांडुरंग प्रकाशाय विठलाय नमो नम मरुत्पुत्राय कवि भीमाय भयाणे श्रीमदानंदीर्थाय प्रख्याताय नमो नम देव चिलुण गो जय श्री कृष्ण नमस्ते दिस मेसेज कम्स टू माय माइंड टुडे क्लैरिटी ऑफ थॉट इज फ्रॉम द प्योरिटी ऑफ माइंड मैन इज अ बंडल ऑफ थॉट्स एंड फीलिंग्स फीलिंग्स अराइज आउट ऑफ द हार्ट लेट इज डील विद दम सम अदर टाइम थॉट्स आर बॉर्न ऑफ द माइंड दे आर थॉट्स एंड थॉट्स Sometimes positive, at times negative. Sometimes hopeful, at times hopeless. Sometimes results of humility, or else products of pride. They play a very important role in one's life. Thoughts determine our action, and action decides our life. Our thoughts, powerful as they are, become silent dictators of our being. We are a toy in their hands. At times they drive us crazy. At times they make us go berserk. At times, for a weak mind, thoughts are. like the glacier that suddenly burst as it did recently and causes an insufferable flood sheer disaster follows such an experience thoughts are sharp weapons they can make or unmake us they are propelled by our very nature and our nature depends on our desires and wantings this syllogism makes us look at thoughts in a detached manner if we have by the grace of god a strange sense of detachment we can see the passage of our thoughts whether they are harmful or helpful this makes our action cautious and well planned or else we are swept off by the onslaught of thoughts and land up in sheer disaster the mind is the originator of thoughts in other words thoughts are the product of the mind if the mind is pure the thoughts are naturally pure if the mind is a bed of devotion our thoughts are holy and devout if the mind is unsullied by lust our thoughts are clear and crystal uncontaminated if our mind is pure our thoughts promote purity in in and around us the mind as it is said by milton can make a hell of heaven and a heaven of hell what matters is our attitude to a particular situation attitude again is a bundle of thoughts solidified all depends on our attitude to bear a tragedy we need the right thought process the purity of kunti's mind made her word a unique prayer give me consistent problems krishna so that i can remember you again and again one in a million can channelize one's mind to accept sorrow that mind which accepts sorrow with a plum is in the grip of grace a pure mind When Draupadi's mind was muddled, she could not think clearly. She ran from pillar to post. Finally, her thoughts, rising from her indomitable belief in Krishna, the purity of her mind made her call out for help. And the Lord's response to the purity of mind was a cascade of robes, colorful and new. Unless the mind is pure, our thoughts will remain turbulent and negative. Once the mind is purified through some sadhana, yoga, or bhakti, the thoughts become clear. They are like tamed beasts. or else they trouble us and haunt us like ghosts in an abandoned castle purity of mind is the result of our guru's blessings and shri krishna's grace it's the legacy of our punya karmas it is the result of living close to holy people it is the result of good habits clean food and austere practices it brings us closer to god and his devotees the clarity of thought arises out of the purity of mind leading man from one level of spirituality to a higher one an impure mind vitiates one's life and that of others too around us it's like a rotten apple in a basket of fruits it has to be cleaned with prayer good habits clean food and holy company the good company of exalted souls immediately purifies the mind and like sage valmiki though he was in the company of bad people at the beginning the beautiful company of sages brought forth thoughts which were like a gorgeous ganges and an immortal epic was born called the valmiki ramayana sharanagat vatsal ram ki ye punya amar hai kahani